Australia's primitive economy. Let's have a look. Good evening everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I hope you've had a good day back at work after the long weekend. I've got my evening stein of coffee and I thought we'd finish the day by having a look at this article from the Financial Review. Australia is rich, dumb and getting dumber by Andrew Patrick. Now he's reporting on information regarding the complexity of the Australian economy and another source of that data. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you will know one of my favorite websites is the Observatory of Economic Complexity. It's very useful for just getting an overview of our economy and our you know, role in global trade and other economies and having a look at different products and getting an understanding of them. You know, so when, when they're talking up, politicians are talking up certain things, you know, oh, the, you know, iron ore is the future of Australia, or we need to get out of coal. You can look at it in a global perspective and understand how much impact we really can have and judge what they're saying. Now, if you think these type of videos are useful and are important, please share this channel and share this content with your friends and family on social media. Help get the word out. The things we're discussing here and having a look at here should be common knowledge because then we can hold you know, the journalists and politicians to account for what they're talking about because often you know all the favorite and favors and promises and the good things they're going to provide you it never really pans out does it i'm gonna have a shot of coffee now that's ah, good and let's get started so australia is rich dumb and getting dumber and thank you uh, to one of my viewers who sent me this article knowing my love of the observatory of economic complexity so Bangladesh, Cuba, Iran, Mali, and Turkmenistan share an unexpected connection to Australia. And it isn't membership of a tourist destination hot list. I don't know. I think, that, I think you definitely have an adventure going to all of these countries in Australia. All are among the economies that are so lacking in complexity and have such limited natural opportunities to develop new products that Harvard University recommends they adopt industrial policy straight out of the post-colonial developing world, the strategic bets approach. Just think about that, guys. Just dwell on that for a moment. Just dwell on that. Okay, because what we'll do is we'll, we'll just quickly jump back to, to good old Observatory of Economic complex Complexity and let's have a look at what country they're looking at. Well, let's look at Cuba. We will search for Cuba. Oh, Cuba. Okay, and we'll have a look, you know, their 75th of economic complexity, their exports, look what they're exporting. Raw sugar, raw tobacco, hard liquor, nickel, crustaceans. Okay, so lots of natural farming products, tobacco and sugar. I mean, come on, that's, that's Cuba, middle of the Caribbean. Let's look at now at Australia. Let's look at Australia. What are we? Iron ore, coal, petroleum, gas, wheat's 2%. So you can see we are also lots of minerals, really. We're digging stuff out of the ground. They're growing tobacco and uh, raw sugar. So strategic bets approach. So ranking of economic complexity in 2007. So 2007, this data is you know, a bit old, but hasn't really moved much since 2017. Japan, number one, Switzerland, South Korea, Deutschland, Singapore, the Republic of Czechoslovakia, Austria, Finland, Sweden, and Hungary in the top 10. And Australia here is at 93. 93. The advice comes from the Harvard Kennedy School's Center for International Development, which two week, weeks ago launched an online database of 133 economies that combines remarkably rich data with beautiful presentations designed to map literally the economic progress and opportunities of the industrial and non-industrial world. The Atlas of Economic Complexity exposes an underappreciated truth about Australia. The enormous wealth generated by iron ore, coal, oil, and gas and sorry, and gas, ma oh, and gas masks, and what? 
oh sorry masks and possibly contributes to an economy that has failed to develop the industries needed to sustain its position among the top ranks of the developed world okay because our economy is so dependent on you know iron coal and gas you know we're, we're a slave to the demand for these three resources guys we're a slave to the demand for those three resources put simply australia is rich and dumb and getting dumber we don't have a sophisticated economy here if anyone has a brilliant idea they go overseas they go to the united states i know when we were working for lawn jane they were pushing really hard to get into the us really hard to expand their footprint there because just the scale of the market is so much bigger than Australia. You'll also notice on you know, Facebook and Instagram, all of their new features are tested here in Australia before they're rolled out as a, you know, in a real country, it's tested here. So on the primary metric used in the database, an index of economic complexity, Australia fell from 57th to 93rd from 1995 to 2017, a decline that is accelerating Australia's top trading partner, China, rose from 51st to 19th over the same time frame. So, I mean, there you have it. There you have it. You know why? Where all of the investment that's come out of the mining boom, where it's all gone. It's in the, into the Triangle of Fail in Sydney. Among other places. In apartments and houses. Property. And most of that isn't, I wouldn't consider any of that particularly innovative in the forms of construction and given how many issues we're having with our procurement methods we're just repeating the same mistakes that happened in england when they did their you know precast um, factory production of housing you know same issues that they did in the 50s so the australian paradox the index measures the diversity and sophistication of national exports based on research by harvest harvard economist Ricardo Hausmann that finds trade in globalized in a globalized world is the path to riches well, that it always has been not just in a globalized world through all of history trade has been a path to riches the Harvard data exposes the paradox of the Australian economy the eighth richest nation in the study has the export profile of Angolia about 70% of products sold to foreign buyers on a net basis are minerals and energy add in food alcohol wool tourism and metal products and that figure rises to around 99 percent 99 percent can you even get a toilet manufactured in australia anymore so before we what we'll do is let's just jump over and let's have a look at the atlas of economic complexity and you can see here i mean it's a different style to the oec it's good to see we've got complexity our competition here in the the market provides doesn't it so let's have a look go to country profiles and united states of america let's have a look at australia so let's compare actually so gdp per capita they've got um 48.5 and here is 54 2009 so 2017 is the data slightly different maybe more up to date i'm not sure we'll find out they've got us at 59th in economic complexity and here the eci rating is 93rd so has this gotten even worse projected growth to 2027 2.17 percent one of the lowest growths in the world well well there you go let's start exploring australia so, well, here you go. Travel and tourism, ICT, transport, insurance and finance, iron ore and concentrate, coal, petroleum, gas, you know, gold. gold. So actually, I'm, I'm quite quite like this one. <laughs> I, may have to, um, I may have to use it a bit more. We'll see. Have, have I found a replacement for OEC, guys? Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you prefer, you know, the night, you know, the darker scheme or the more colorful scheme? Let's just click here on, well, there you go. Gross exports, 41 billion. So let's jump back to the article. So notwithstanding the success of CSL at Land at Lassian and corporate pioneers, Australia sells the world almost nothing. Relative to total exports, that requires a degree to make. We're a primitive country, guys. It's it's a bit bit sad, really. 
A stray is less comp complex than expected for its income level, the study says. As a result, its economy is projected to grow slowly. So perhaps, perhaps this is why we have wage stagnation here in Australia. Okay, guys, because we're not doing anything more complicated or more advanced than other nations. What's the point in having all these people, you know, get high school educations and university degrees when our economy just isn't complicated, complex enough and these people are getting shipped overseas? As a consequence, the economy will grow 2.2% a year over the coming decade, ranking in the bottom half of countries globally, according to the Harvard projections. Well, that's if it doesn't, uh, doesn't recess. Countries can do very well selling a narrow range of simple products, but to come, become richer and end the wage growth malaise that is a frequent political complaint, they need to develop new products. More sophisticated products support higher wages, according to Harvard's Center for International Development. Well, no, we can just sell coffee to each other and real estate and be mortgage brokers. That's all Australia needs. Just kick the can around, guys. innovation deficit. Lulled into inaction by the resource boom, Australia has been appalling at innovation. In the 15 years to 2017, Singapore, a nation with no natural resources apart from human capital and proximity to big markets, expanded into 19 new global indus industries and generated 14.4 billion or 200, sorry, $2,560 per resident. They included gas turbines, x-ray machines, synthetic rubber, and imitation jewelry. Over the same period, Australia broke into, into seven new products in a meaningful way, way, according to the Harvard database. Precious metal ores, ammonia, rare earths, activated carbon, hydrochloric acid, scrap rubber, and wax residues. The value per Australian, $33. $33. I, I'm just thinking, we did a job where they were replacing lift motors. The lift motors all came overseas. They're all manufactured in Spain. And the old en engines, the old motors that were there from this building was built, oh, I have to, have to check, I think in the 60s or 70s. It's one of the first pre-stressed buildings in Brisbane. The lifts that were in there, the motors that were in there were original. They were built in Newcastle in Newcastle. Australia used to be at the forefront of technology and innovation. Australia was the first country in the world to build a tank with a cast hull. Before Germany, before any of the European countries, Australia was the first. We were right up there. I guess, I think it's right. There's, we've been lulled into inaction by the resource boom. We haven't had to innovate. People could just make money by Buying a block, splitting it in half, putting two houses on it, flipping it, putting units on it, flipping it. Oh, okay, just, you know, cut fast, fast, fast. Boom. There's no innovation there. You know, all, all these people selling their, their market secrets on YouTube or Facebook. So that's not innovation, guys. Not really. You know, maybe innovative in how you cut corners, but that's not the type of innovation we need, is it? That's actually costing us money, and we're starting to see that now. So the most remarkable and damning conclusion of the research is that Australia is part of a group of simple economies that should adopt policies that single out specific industries for support. Countries that many Australians would regard as economic peers, including Japan, Israel and the US, are on the frontier of technology and should be developing products that don't currently exist, it says. Well, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't consider any of those countries Australia's peers. I guess it's because I've been reading the OEC too much and just looking at how it's been a bugbear of mine for a while. Product proposals. For Australia, the study propose, proposes a couple of dozen exports based on research that suggests uh, logically leaps are easier when you manufacture similar products such as moving from woolen socks to business suits. The suggestions include serums and vaccines, laboratory reagents, Vehicle bodies, vehicle bodies, not even vehicles, vehicle bodies, butter, well, frozen vegetables, pig fat, chemical wood pulp, and linseed. Yeah, okay. 
so much for in the innovation nation. Yes, it is a complete joke of us being the innovation nation. Even if, if the suggestions are overly pessimistic, they point to Australia's struggle to break into international markets beyond resources and agriculture. Despite being a preoccupation of both main political parties, industry policy has done little to improve the economy's sophistication. I would argue, I would argue that the government has gotten in the way that there's an element of sovereign risk here in Australia and just bureaucratic red tape. I had to get a car registered today and it was an utter nightmare, an utter nightmare. So as the government manages the current downturn, it might muster the courage to remove barriers that make it harder for businesses to thrive. After all, surely an advanced economy such as Australia can do better than Senegal, which is one rank higher on Harvard's list. Well, let's, let's not be so arrogant. Let's look at Senegal, guys. We'll jump over here. We'll jump over here. Okay, so they're ranked higher than Australia. Frozen fish excluding fillets, petroleum oils, phosphoric acid, gold 7%. Well, that's, you know, 200 million. Look at the exporter ranking, the current account, total exports, 3.57 billion. So with regards to complexity, they are higher than Australia. So, I mean, cigars, there we go. Cigars and cigarettes. Cements. Wigs. <laughs> so I will link to this website, guys, and you can have a look and compare it to my favorite, the OEC. But it looks like it has a bit different visualizations for the data, and I really haven't explored it yet, guys. I've only just had a look at it here today. And we can see jumping from uh, Senegal to Australia. Get a bit of understanding. So what do you think? What do you think the government should do? I would suggest we need to look at special economic zones where we can reduce red tape, bureaucracy, and you know, getting in the way of businesses and innovation. But when every day I seem to read about another government statutory body that regulates potatoes or selling goods and services in remote communities, I have very little confidence in any of our political establishments having the guts or even, even the intelligence to kind of think about these things outside of the box. Let me know what you think, guys. Do you think there's any hope? in our leaders who who do you think we should vote for i i would argue we need to shift the, over to window but when we have protests happening in every city that the you know the sky is falling chicken little people you know uh, wanting to destroy probably one of the few things we're exporting which is coal and lbg what are we going to be left <laughs> I don't. maybe that's what needs to happen for these people to learn anyway guys thank you for joining me for this video please like share and subscribe let me know what you think in the comments guys please give your suggestions if you would like to support the channel and help me create these videos i have a patreon and subscribe star in the links below i appreciate everyone's help if you can't afford to do that or you're not interested thanks for putting up with the ads guys i appreciate that too anyway i will see you all next time and i mean here we go razor stein manufactured overseas <laughs> to coffee probably imported from overseas to Australia's economy. Take care.